We're living in a parallel universe. Oh, the car just went by. One in which fears are eased and disabilities diagnosed and treated through a computer-generated environment. Wow. That's cool. A patient's dream. It's virtual reality. Anywhere I look, I'm actually panoramically seeing something different. Technology and medicine are merging in new ways to help many become virtually healed. It's a dark and scary world Doug sees. To my left, I could hear and see choppers coming. And I, they'd come in, and I could look up, and I'd see them fly over. It may not look entirely real, but to Doug, it is the hellish Vietnam he experienced more than 30 years ago. It triggers the same pain, emotion, and anxiety. You will relive it. Now, I'm in a little room, and there's air conditioning, and I'm sweating because when I was in Nam, it was 110 degrees. It was hot. And your mouth gets dry. Sometimes you feel the pain a little bit. The sound of gunfire, M16s and AK-47s, is authentic. So are the sloshing noises Doug makes as he trudges through a marsh. With the sound, it's not too cartoonish. Because you're taking yourself back. Rice paddies, a landing strip, and open fields are part of the landscape. Doug is on a virtual battlefield, controlled not by the enemy, but by psychologist well, David time, Reedy. Every session is uniquely tailored to the patient and where they are at that moment in time. I never do anything in virtual reality without the patient's permission first, and we talk about it beforehand. If the patient starts to become overwhelmed, then I back off the stimuli. I may lower the volume, I may turn off the effect, I may stop it. I honestly think that if I hadn't done the virtual reality, I'd probably ended up in the hospital. Virtual reality forced Doug to confront the feelings he had run from for decades. Feelings that clouded relationships and darkened his view of the world. Post-traumatic stress disorder is an illness that can affect anyone who has survived an ordeal. Those who suffer with PTSD relive the experience in some way every day. Often minor events take on an overblown significance. PTSD can destroy lives and relationships. It's the fifth most common psychiatric problem. Virtual Vietnam is an example. They are reliving it. And so patients see water buffalo in that environment. There aren't any. They see other soldiers. There aren't any. Because they're projecting in. And that's what you want them to do. When you're seeing what you're seeing, and I have a joystick, I can make myself go forward, backwards. Anywhere I look, I'm actually panoramically seeing something different. When I start moving around, what I generally do, I hear gunfire. And when I heard the gunfire, I went for protection towards the, towards the gunfire to a certain degree, but then to, with the protection of the tree. Doug was seriously injured when the truck he was in was blown up 20 days after he arrived in Vietnam as a Green Army draftee. His leg was pinned in the wreckage and crushed. I hit the landmines and then I was shot in the foot. I don't know when, but basically the whole truck was caved in. And for all practical purposes, I said I'm dead. Doug's physical injuries healed, but the war left psychological wounds that led to excessive drinking and constant irritability. He suffered from flashbacks and lost sleep. His two marriages ended in divorce. 
Emotional numbness and detachment were painful and ever-present reminders of Vietnam. Whether it's a little injury or a big injury didn't really make a difference, but you saw the, the, the problems and the physical damage that's done by war. Doug and fellow vets Claude and Donald are part of a research study at Atlanta's Veterans Administration Hospital. Claude and Donald also had problems escaping the trauma of their past. Neither had sought help until now. It made me realize that uh, the 30 years I, I could have seek, seek help earlier, I probably had a, a much fuller life. When I first put it on, I, it kind of shocked me. You know, I said, wow. You know, it was kind of sudden, like you right back where you were 30 years ago almost. When we put it in slow motion, then they could ask me the questions as to what it was like for me. So that's what gave me a clearer picture as to where I fit it into. Vets experience Vietnam almost the way it was when they were there. The virtual war is waged in daylight and darkness. In fair weather, and fog. Engineers strive to make this world seem real. One of the things we've learned from building several of these environments and working with patients is that as long as we have a good caricature of the environment, that's probably good enough for therapy. So it's important not to have anything obviously wrong. One time we had the helicopter, so it came in for a landing at the wrong angle, and everyone noticed that. Hobby Tower, Long Easy 316 Delta Bravo, flight at 2, 5 uh, The helicopter, a Huey, is what was used in Vietnam, and now lands at the correct angle. All of the sights and sounds combine to transport war survivors to a time and place they can't get to in any other manner. And it may be the only safe method of exposing patients to guns and bombs without actually putting them in harm's way. Control is one of virtual reality's advantages. They're very careful not to push the vet beyond what the vet can handle. I think some therapists are afraid of exposure therapy because they're afraid the patient will get too upset but getting upset and dealing with the traumatic experience is sometimes part of the healing process. The key is to do it right. You basically take yourself right back to that time and place that you were in now. Reedy is convinced that virtual reality, in combination with group or one-on-one -on -one psychotherapy, really works. We measure before treatment, immediately after treatment, and three months and six months later. And in the immediately after treatment, the three months and six months later, in all three measurements, there are significant decreases in the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Donald and Claude still need therapy, but they credit their virtual trips to Vietnam with helping them. That was the hardest part to confront it, and then once I did it, then I wanted to get something out of it. And that's what was able to be accomplished. It's not a cure-all, but it's a, it's a beginning for me. And I realized I got more work to do. But now I'm started and I, I see the results can be positive. Having confronted his demons, Doug no longer runs from them. Life is more manageable. He can finally deal with the memories of injured comrades that had haunted him for years. I used to think about that. That scene, I don't cry about that anymore. 